let's talk about blood vessels. And it goes without saying from our title that we're interested in both the structure, the shape, the organization, the actual sort of mechanics of it, but we're also interested in the function, what it does, okay? So we'll address both of those. I've got the three primary sets of vessels here in the image. I mean, they're arteries, they're veins, they're capillaries. I would remind you, or at least let you know, there are some slight variations on uh, arteries and veins that you might study in, in, future refer in future studies, but these are what we want to be thinking about for now. So, our arteries, let's go there first. Of course, these arteries, as we can see, let me, let me put it over here. So let me take artery over here. We'll start over here. Artery, okay, or arteries, of course. The artery, what we want to say here is that in terms of their structure, which I'm going to put up here as S, they have a thick, they have a thick, smooth muscle layer. Thick, smooth muscle layer. Let's see if we can actually identify that on the image. And of course, what we've got here is that this is a layer of smooth muscle in here. And that muscle can constrict inwards, so to force... Um, the, effectively the loom in this bit in the middle to get smaller and of course it can dilate or relax and allow uh, that that opening that lumen to become bigger so that's what that thick smooth uh, muscle layer does another structure of an artery is they have smaller let me use that word i've used a couple of times already lumen lumen is the space inside the vessel, I haven't drawn that very well there, the space side of the vessel, smaller lumen than veins. So the structure of arteries is that the space in between is actually smaller than in veins. That's kind of interesting, right? And finally, with our structure, we want to stress here that the walls are really elastic. Now, all of those points don't become, and let me be clear about walls, guys, we are talking about this surrounding tissue. They're very kind of elasticated. Now, this becomes relevant when we start to look at the function of an artery. So if we go over here to function, I'll stick with my pink over here. What does this actually do? So function number one, it or they carry oxygenated blood. Okay. Now I'd like you to think about what the ex which which is the I think I've just gone over it and come back the way. Carry oxygenated blood. Now you might be able to think of the exact the exception, the artery that doesn't carry oxygenated blood, of course, is the pulmonary artery, but all other arteries do carry um, oxygenated blood because of course the blood is leading away from the heart now coming down to here I'm gonna say they cope with high blood pressure I'm gonna put up arrow high BP okay so they cope with high blood pressure how because they've got elastic walls and then final point guys in with regard to the functions they can, I should have put this up at the top here can constrict and dilate and if you want to go super posh at this point, you can call this vasoconstriction, vasodilation. So this muscle, as we've said, this smooth muscle layer can constrict and dilate. And of course, what does that do? It changes the scale of the lumen. So that's what our artery is for. And I really like to add in here, their function is to go away from the heart, away from heart. So they lead blood away from heart. And that is 100% of arteries, including the pulmonary artery. Now, let's take this a bit further. Let's start talking about our veins. I'm going to put veins as some kind of greeny aqua color here. So we've got veins. Now, this is not the order the blood will pass, by the way. So blood goes from arteries to capillaries to veins in that direction. But we're going to sort of break the cycle and go veins after arteries, okay? So first things first, our structure, we want to describe veins first of all. They have a thin muscle wall. Again, it's smooth muscle of the same nature as the smooth muscle above. But look at this muscle wall. It's far thinner than that of an artery. So we could even say thinner muscle walls might be an actual better way of putting it. They have a larger lumen. And you can see here, right guys, you can see here that this lumen is greater than this one here. So the larger lumen, and we'll see why in a second. And importantly, folks, we haven't got them pictured in the image, but they have pocket valves. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do what is almost definitely gonna be a terrible drawing of a, va of a, of a vein. So here's a vein, guys. And let's imagine the blood is moving in this direction. Change to red, it'll reddish. <laughs> That's not that red, actually. So the blood is moving in this direction. And this vein, it has a valve, almost like a trap door here, I suppose. And when this blood, during systole, or when the heart is contracting, pushes up through the valve, the valve will open, allow blood to fall through. But during diastole, when the heart is contracting, this valve will effectively sort of close. And the blood cannot fall back and go back in the wrong direction. So that's our structure. 
I've already mentioned quite a few of the actual um, uh, functions here, but let's go through them formally and make sure that we've got these nice and clear. So they carry deoxygenated blood. So we've got, this is meant to be the same color, by the way, deoxygenated blood. And of course, the exception of that one is the pulmonary vein, of course. They deal with blood at low pressure. Now, you might want to reflect on why blood in veins is low pressure. And of course, it's because they're furthest away from the heart. They return blood back to the heart, right? And they're there to prevent backflow, as we mentioned already. Now, that word backflow is a really important word that you can use in a few different contexts. You might remember that the one thing you need to know about heart valves, for example, is they prevent backflow in the heart. Well, it's the same with these pocket valves in veins. They prevent backflow, okay? So lovely. Now the low pressure, that's why the lumen is wide as well, to allow blood to pass with less and less restriction. And to finish this off, folks, let me change to some lovely yellow colour and we're going to talk about capillaries. Okay, capillaries. And again, remembering that it's structure first. What is the structure of capillaries? And I'll take you back to the image in a second. Well, the first thing we need to address is that they are super skinny. They are one cell thick. Now, those of you almost all of you studying biology, you might know a bit about endothelial cells already. These are individual lining cells, also known as endothelial cells. You're not going to get asked that in PE, but you know, you could link it to your biology. And they form the perimeter of the capillary. So it's re important to realize that if this was the actual scale of a capillary, you would not be able to see this next to this vein. It would be so microscopic, you would not be able to see it. You would need a microscope. A light microscope would be fine, but you would need a light microscope to be able to see that. Now then, let's go a little bit further. So they're one cell thick. Of course, we're going to get to gase exchange in a moment, right? It's obvious. They surround tissues. So we get capillary beds. That's a really nice term for you to use in your answers. Capillary beds. And they surround the liver. They surround the muscle. They surround the brain. They surround uh, the alveoli and so on. They are at tissue structures. And of course, it's because they're delivering and removing certain things uh, from them. More of which in a second. And they are between... They are between, don't put three E's in there, between A's and V's. In other words, you find them between the arteries and the veins. They effectively connect arteries and veins. And this one I really like. They are very massive understatement numerous. And what I mean by that is there's millions of them. Okay, so they're really tiny and there's many, many millions of them. I actually don't know what sort of figures there are in the human body, but you're talking... I want, to, I want to say we're talking billions. I mean, I think that's almost definitely the case, but I've never thought about it before. So I'll, I'll be cautious and say Google that and check it for yourself. Now then, what do they do? They are there for efficient gas exchange or gase exchange. I say it in the correct way, gaseous exchange. Now they're one cell thick. Okay, that's really important. They're, they're partially permeable. I didn't mention that earlier, but they're partially permeable. Again, linked to your biology. And of course, gases can pass across through the process of diffusion and finally they remove waste products okay so they are effectively the site where let's say lactic acid or carbon dioxide that's in the muscle let's say carbon dioxide from aerobic respiration is released and it gets back into the blood and then transported back to the lungs where it can be diffused and breathed out as a waste okay so there we go anything else i want to tell you i don't think so i think that's our structure and function covered i think some really nice details there for you hope that hope that helps